All right. Thanks once again for watching Blue City Reviews. I'm wearing this <clears throat> big old stupid grin because I am so happy to finally be talking about To Sleep With Anger. Check out this beautiful new artwork from Criterion. Comes with a poster that features the same artwork. I don't want to take it out because I don't want to wrinkle it. I'll display it when I get a frame or something. This is from mastermind Charles Burnett, who just recently got a lot of awards and acclaim for his overall career, which was long overdue because this is one of the best films ever made. Absolutely one of the best films ever made. It's a work of art. It's flawless. And for a change, the majority of critics agree with me. Now, the plot on its surface is fairly simple. It involves a tight-knit family living in Southern California who, they're the type of family that lives in each other's pockets, right? I mean, even when the kids moved out, they didn't really move out. They, the two sons got their own wives and, and their own lives, but they all still eat dinner together every night. Uh, the parents are paying the majority of the bills. You know, the grandparents are raising their grandkids just as much as the parents that type of family, and people who spend a lot of time together fight a lot. So all of the problems that you would expect in that situation arise, you know, arguments about finances and childcare, that sort of thing, uh, come to head often, but nothing that's un unmanageable, just, you know, a normal middle-class family trying to get by. Until Old Harry shows up. Now, Old Harry, that name alone should <laughs> ring some bells. Old Harry, played by Danny Glover, who is an old friend of the family's. They haven't seen him in decades. Being the good fam being the good people that they are, they invite him in with open arms, right? Um, he needs a place to stay. He shows up on their porch with nothing but a suitcase. They say, hey, raid our fridge. Here's a place to sleep. Stay until you get your shit together. And shortly thereafter, everything begins to go wrong in their lives. Starting with these little arguments that used to seem so trivial, now they seem like these family members are throwing fucking emotional grenades at each other. And uh, he really amplifies, the character of Old Harry here, really seems to amplify every little problem that they had to the point where the whole family is like this big blister about to pop. Um, now... Old Harry, obviously, lots of people view this character as uh, the devil or, you know, sort of that type of figure. And there are other people who see Harry as like a guardian angel, right? He was meant to come into this family's lives to sort of bring these problems to the forefront so everybody could deal with him. He might be their savior. I don't want to get too much into the, into the plot because... Well, this, the story, while it is simple, it's the type of thing you're going to want to talk about after you see it. I recommend watching this with a couple friends or, or your partner because it has a lot of layers to it. Now, what I really want to focus on here, the whole point of this video, is mainly to give Danny Glover all the praise he deserves for this. Starting with, okay, he was 41 when he did the original Lethal Weapon. That would have been 1986. He would have been 41. Okay, he's playing 50 there. I mean, yeah, they frosted his shit a little bit, but he's playing 50 there. So he would have been 43, 44 when they filmed this, give or take. And he's playing early 60s, more, like, more likely late 60s or 70s. But we could say, you know, if I'm to stretch my imagination, early 60s. That's a feat. I mean, I'm 42. So he was a year younger than me when he was playing 50 in Lethal Weapon. I'm like, whoa, dude, that is acting. And that's just one level. Now, beyond that, he's got to play evil. You know, he's got to play a human cockroach. At least that's the way I see it. I mean, he's, he's really slimy and very sinister. And there's a twinkle in his eye that does not come with onset lights. And he does it amazingly and beyond that this isn't just a one one like a one-sided character it's not that at all there's some sympathy to this guy too that he has to play this is danny glover's best performance without a doubt it is chilling 
it is mind boggling that a human being <laughs> could portray this level of emotion on screen. It blows me away. And that's not to put down the rest of the cast at all either. We got Mary Alice, most people know from The Matrix Revolutions, but she's fantastic here. And, and in many other things, Richard Brooks, underrated actor. Cheryl Lee Ralph, she's got one scene in here where she's attempting to serve Danny Glover and his rowdy friends some food that's so heartbreaking and so good. Uh, Ethel, Ethel Ayler, I, I believe that's how you pronounce her name. Uh, she is one of the first characters to sniff out that there's something fucked up about Danny Glover and he, <laughs> the family should probably poison him, she recommends. Um, I haven't seen her in much, but her performance here was amazing. Full disclosure, I took notes because I didn't want to screw any of this up. Uh, the cinematography uh, by Walt Lloyd, who also did uh, Pump Up the Volume and Sex Lies and Videotape, Shortcuts, Kafka. This movie looks phenomenal. Every shot is beautiful. There's a surrealistic dream sequence that opens the film where uh, a character's toes and, and his surroundings uh, start on fire, which was done before CGI. That looks fantastic. This is a gorgeous looking film. Uh, it feels like a blues song. It really does. It, it feels like a blues song that sort of someone would break out their guitar and sing by a, a dying campfire. A tale of a, a, a wayward drifter who wanders into this town and shortly after everything begins going bad and everybody sort of knows who it is but nobody wants to say it. It's a tale as old as time, like uh, even Stephen King's Need Needful Things and uh, fuck. Thousands of other tales have dealt with that, but what, what makes this so unique is the take on it, right? I mean, these actors and, and, and th this specific take on it is so unique. Charles Burnett, man, I'm so glad that Criterion did this release. He's finally getting some of the praise he deserves. Now, th there's another element to this whole story that is important as well, which is the spiritual side of it, um, the, the mystical side of it. It deals a little bit with hoodoo. I just watched a, a Robert Don Johnson documentary, which had some of the same elements to it. And uh, it's about, you know, sort of the South colliding with this, this family's new, new take on life, this healthy neighborhood they're trying to, to create, and they're trying to f not forget but they're trying to create a new reality aside from their history in the South, which involves slavery. Some very close ancestors of theirs, not very far removed, probably a few decades, if that, removed from them, were slaves. And uh, they have a, a lot of history also with hoodoo and casting spells. And um, tobies are talking a lot, a lot about. A toby is, a, from what I understand, a sort of a trinket that wards off evil spirits. So it is implied that uh, Danny Glover's character... Uh, might be using that for negative purposes within the household. But that's up to the viewer to decide. Um, very interesting subtext, though. Especially, I, it's a theme that's been coming up on accident. Um, watching Crossroads and watching all the stuff about the blues and the South. And hoodoo is a common theme. And the Crossroads come up often as well. So, anyways, to sleep with anger... I cannot quite recommend enough. It's not gonna be everybody's cup of tea though. There's no sex, there's no violence, there's no bullets or explosions. Um, the only fist fight you'll see is a little scuffle in a kitchen. The only blood you'll see is a couple specks hitting the floor. This is all about the dynamics of this family dealing with this sinister character that they can't quite identify. Some are, are attracted to him, some recognize him right away for what he is. And uh, some are just like lost within his spell. Some don't know quite what to do. Um, an agent of chaos, I guess, as you'd call it. But as the character says, evil is something that needs to be practiced. This is a very interesting tale about the evil that men do. Or maybe it isn't. Maybe it's about something completely fucking different. You see it. You decide. All right? But give it a look. It's an important film. To Sleep with Anger, 1990. Peace.